Welcome back. Today we are going to make a hearth broom. And we're going to make it on a broomstick. Here's what we need today. A broomstick. We need some hurl. Remember hurl is, I'm sorry, knurl. Knurl is broom corn with the stem on. And you also notice that I have mine soaking at least for a half an hour in hot water before you start this. Okay. So um, what you're going to need today is a broom needle. Mine looks a little different than yours will. Uh, an exacto knife or a pair of scissors. You're going to need a broom vise today. And you are going to need a hammer. And you're also going to need some broom nails. I think that's it. Of course, you need a spindle or whatever it is that you're going to use for your nylon. Okay. So let's get started. First thing I want to do before I start is make sure that I have a jerk string and I have a couple sitting here. This is what they look like. Okay. All that is is like 12, 16 inches doubled over and it has a, a overhand knot on the end of it. And the reason that I have that is because when I get done with my broom, I want to jerk that line through there. Okay. And it's one of those things if you don't have it done and ready, you can't stop and get twine off your spindle so make sure that you have a couple waiting for you before you start okay so you don't have to do this do a hearth broom on uh, you know your uh, what would you say normal looks like a dowel broomstick in fact this has got some curve on it but anyways um and for today's class we are going to do that just so you learn on a smooth surface but if you're looking for uh, a dynamic broom, uh, take a walk in the woods. If you can take the stick, bang it against a, a tree trunk card and it doesn't bust, right on. It'll work. Um, you want to make sure that it doesn't get real big in diameter because the larger you get with the diameter, the more br broom corn is going to be required to cover it. And therefore, it makes for a bigger broom and it's harder on your hands. So, um, but let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a broom nail about four fingers up on my broom. So about right there. And I'm just going to tap it in. Now, the reason that you put a broom nail on is because that's what holds the broom corn from sliding off the broom stick. Lots of broom, broom stuff here. Shouldn't be that hard. I just have it in the wrong place. I don't know. Doesn't help if you hand it open your leg. Okay, so I don't want this all the way in. But so you can see that there is just a little bit of space there so that strength can hold on there. Now, I am right handed. So that means that I plate or braid, whatever term that you want to call it. With my right hand, so that means the brushy end of my broom corn needs to be towards my left hand and underneath the table. Okay, you can't see my table, but because I have tables on both sides. But the most important thing to be is that you want the broom corn to your left hand if you are right handed, because you'll be plating with the right hand, or vice versa. It does make a difference. Okay, so um, last month we talked about the differences in neural neural with an neck that's the only way I remember it we talked about the nice long ones that were used for um, the outside plating of a broom that wasn't that uh, not such a big deal when you're doing a cobweb because you're not layering but today we are going to be layering okay so I'm gonna take some of these nice pretty ones and I'm gonna set those aside for right now that's kind of thick I want the shorter ones for the inside and the nice pretty ones for outside later so um and you're looking at oh you know maybe 20 altogether pieces of broom corn here and that is generous but I would rather you be generous to the start and um, see these are kind of thicker so I'm gonna put those thicker and shorter go on the inside Long and pretty go on the outside. Now this is thinner, but it's kind of short. That's really long. That's a little bit on the short side. That's thinner. And it's, I mean, 
there's no right answer here. You're just kind of winging it. These are kind of shorter. That's a thick guy. So these are all things that have the possibility for going, starting out and uh, going underneath. So I want those nice long ones. These are both kind of short to go on the outside. And I want about 15, I think, for the outside. I said 20, so maybe a little bit more than that. So let me see that those look pretty nice. And like I say, I sort them now because when I get going, I don't want to sort them. I want them to be ready so I can just place them where I want them. These are a little bit thicker. That's thicker, that's short and thick. That might work. Mm. So you kind of get the idea what I'm doing here. Uh, those might work. Okay, so these are all kind of thicker. So I kind of, I've got my beginning ones to my right and my pretty ones to my left. And we are going to go ahead and start here. So I've got my nail in. And I want to make sure that the twine is coming off the top of the broom spindle. First thing I'm going to do is do an overhand knot. And we're going to do a slip knot that slips on the long piece instead of the short piece. This is how we do that. Two fingers. Bring it around it. See where it crosses, intersects. Hold that there. You can make your loop a little bit bigger if you want. Turn that loop upside down. Take your other hand. Go through that hoop. Grab that long string. And tighten it up. Okay, so I am remembering that I want the broom corn on my left hand side because I'm right handed. Okay, and I'm going to just do like three wraps here. Okay, so when I start with the under part, under layers, I guess, under layers of the hearth broom, I don't have to worry about if they're odd or not because, or odd number or an even number, because I'm not plating them. The only time I need to do that is when I'm plating them, okay? So this underneath layers are not plated. So when I'm putting them in here, I don't want to put them right on this connection because it tends to pop, okay? Sometimes it pops anyways. But usually if you've got it soaked for about a half hour in hot water, it doesn't do that. But you see how I'm kind of placing them and then I um, put some pressure on it. And I'm doing this in twos. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> the reason that I do this, and I'll show you later when it's important to have an odd amount, is I'll put one in first and then I do, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I put in by two so I make sure I have an, uh, an odd amount, but this isn't uh, mandated at this particular time. All right, so I think I can stick one more guy in here. So I've got them all in there and now I'm gonna wrap for three. Could do four if you want. Now I can see where I started because I can see where that's coming in, that beginning part there. I'm going to do one more wrap, I think. So I got four. Now what I want to do is I want to build up the shoulders. So this is kind of like the inside, and I want shoulders on a hearth broom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, oh, you could take three or four, but I'm going to take three. And this is three or four depending on the diameter of your broom handle. On this particular one, three will work. So I put three together on the side, and I know I'm on the side because I can look. Here's where I started. That's where my, where my nail is. That's where my first row starts. Right there. So I got three on this side. And I'm just going to come around to the other side, and that grabs that there and real nice for me. And I'm going to grab three other ones.
And then I'm gonna take a wrap on that as well. Now you'll see that I'm gonna, heading up on this. And I'm gonna do about three or four rows of this. And then this is where your exactly comes in. Okay, so I need to trim some of this stuff off. So I'm going to take my X-Acto and I'm going to cut away from me. I'm going to trim this stuff up. See, I'm holding that tension as I'm moving around and cleaning that up. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my last layer of pretties on there. And these will be plated. So, I don't want them real thick. The thinner and the longer the better. So I'm going to look through here and get my best ones that I had pulled out. That's, I don't know if that'll do it or not. Maybe. Okay. So here's number one. Okay. And then I'm going to add the rest of these in twos. And the reason I'm going to add them in twos is this guarantees me that I have not screwed up and don't know how to count. And I'll have an odd amount. So I want an odd amount on this last layer so that I can do a continuous weave on the plate. So you want these in here snug, but you notice when I put them in, I tighten down on them, which gets them closer together. So you don't want them packed in there. But you don't also don't want them in there so loose that you got gaps. See how that one just cracked right through there? Was not wet. So that one's not gonna be part of it. I'll have a class for what you do with the broom corn that didn't quite make the grade. Coming to a class soon. Okay. So I can see that I need some more of these. So I'm going to have to kind of pick through my other ones here and see what I got. See how that's getting bigger? So I'll pick through my other ones. Now these might, ha might have been the primo ones, but they'll work too. Okay, and I can maybe get two more in there. Yeah, maybe two more. So I'll look over here and get the thinnest ones that I can and stick those in there. The thinnest, longest ones I've got. How's that? These two look like good candidates. So I got everybody in there and now I'm going to wrap for both three. You can see this ends up being a pretty stout broom. Maybe four. Three or four. Four is better. Three is good. Okay, so that'll be five. So now we're going to start doing that plate. Remember how we did that with the cobweb broom, but we didn't have as many uh, broom corn, uh, neural broom corn in here, and it wasn't as large. Remember that broom corn goes up and down pretty good, does not go sideways. So you have to tilt it down. Bring it underneath that, then use your finger and crease. So it's like a three step. Bring it up, underneath, four step. Bring the finger over and crease. Underneath, bring it over. It's kind of a three, three or four. However it works for you. But the biggest thing to remember is before you crease it, to bring that over as far as you can and then crease it. Use that finger and crease it. As I come around, I'll see if I know how to count. And I have made uh, odd amount, then I haven't made a mistake. 
and right now I'm off. So that's where I'm going to start my braid. And I want to um, bring it down and underneath that nylon twine, bring my finger over and then crease it. If you don't, bring your finger over and then crease it. It'll be real wide on your plate or braid. That's not what you want. The magic is in the finger. Bring it all the way over and then crease it. That'll get it all the way over as far as possible. And it makes for a prettier broom. Okay, look, I'm around the, the beginning and I know how to count to an odd amount. And uh, it's a continuous weave and I'm uh, opposite the weave of the first row. Life is good. Okay. So, remember that you thin this, right? So it means it's going to be thicker here, and as you go further down the broomstick, it's going to get thinner, which means these guys are going to get closer together. And it's harder, easier actually, to make a mistake with your over and under. So, be careful to watch your plate and make sure that it's on. It should always, the, the next row should be the exact opposite of the row before that. So in this case, last row that was under, this row this is on top of, or over, under, over. Okay. So every time I use that finger and pull it over and I give it a crease. So that gives it some memory on where I want it to go. Now see how I had to look underneath here to find that other one? they're starting to get closer and it's easier for them to get hit underneath one so make sure that you look and dig that one out same thing here see they're getting closer So I can only braid out to the shortest of the lengths of my long pretties. How's that? Or, I mean, you don't have to go all the way out. You can go as far as you want. You can say, oh, well, I think I've had enough of this. And that will be good. That's fine, too. Now I'm going to go out for a while here. I like a broom that has that pretty braid on it. In fact, I think I like these. This is, these are the type of brooms that I learned on to start. And I like a plated broom. They're kind of, you know, they're old-fashioned. and Not everybody knows how to make them. And to me, they're just pretty. Probably it's the the basket maker in me. You can see my pant legs get really wet. And you also notice that as this gets, you know, closer that that's more hard to find. I really have to dig down there and find that one on the bottom to bring up. So be aware of that. And when you are using you know when you have the tension on your string you want it tight 
you know, so you could play the banjo on it if you wanted. Uh, but you don't want to, you want to be sitting straight up in your chair and not bent over like a hunchback. Because that'll hurt after a while. I think I'm getting pretty close to being done here. I could go up farther. But maybe only a couple more rows. So we're going to call this good, I think. And I'm going to come around to my beginning spot. So that would be that at? over on this side. So I'm going to come around. that beginning and then I'm gonna lay in my jerk string and I know it's my beginning because I can see this guy right here okay so like I said I could go up further if I wanted but I'm gonna call this good okay so there's my start this is gonna be my end so I'm gonna grab my I'm thinking I'm grab the purple one that red one's a little bit too long so not on the right hand side you're gonna lay it in there like this and then we're gonna wrap for about four. Oh yeah so it's gonna be a wrap and pull Oop. stay up there for me please so wrap and pull keeping that nice and tight Go around one more time just for good measure. Okay, now I'm going to hold the tension with my thumb and I'm going to come down here and cut that string. I'm going to change the one that I'm holding on. Here is my tail that I cut off. I'm going to come through the hoop and grab that so that it's through there. I'm going to grab the knot end on the right hand side. And I'm going to jerk it through. That worked. So I want to make sure I tighten that up. Doesn't matter what you put it around. Put it around something and pull it a little bit tighter. Just to make sure it's on there good. Then cut it the excess away from you. See how that's a pretty nice, pretty uh, um, plated hearth broom. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this excess. There's The easiest way i found is to take your X-Acto, put it up against it, and then just pull that towards you, that excess. All the way around. So, of course this is really wet. And you'll want to make sure that you dry this. Uh, you know, just hanging in the house completely because broom corn will mold. And if you use it uh, and you get it wet and you don't use all of it, then make sure that you take it out of the water and lay it someplace where it will completely dry, that it's not on top of one another because it will mold and then you can't use it. So, now what you want to do. So, I've got my nice plate here and then what I'm going to do is remember I put shoulders on here so you can see that it's wider than it is. It's not all the way around. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to sew this down and so I need my vise. Shakers were the first ones that flattened the broom. Before that they were all round. Remember when you're going to do your stitching that I'm going to bring this over. And I think for me, I think I'm going to put that in this second hole. But it's, you know, once again, this is subjective. You decide how wide you want your broom. And uh, you can have it wider if you want. It's just more stitching. You can have it narrower. If you have it, you know, if you have it more narrow, it's going to be a stronger broom. So it depends on if it's going to be decorative or it's going to be functional. Now one thing I will tell you that I have found. When I see I use a broom all the time in the winter. You need to be in there, don't you? Well, 
I'll just take you off. You won't have to worry about it. In the winter, I am constantly, especially this winter, cleaning off my car. So if I'm going to have a broom that I am using to brush the snow off my car, I want it strong. So I don't want it real broad. And I want to do several rows of sewing because the more you sew that down, the stronger it makes it. So if I'm going to do uh, you know, a broom that stays outside and I use for cleaning cars, I wouldn't make it that I wouldn't make it real fanned out and I would do at least three rows of stitching. So whatever it takes to tighten these up. Okay. So, um, and then what we're going to do, I'm going to use this green again because it's here. So this one, I want to be pretty generous. So I'd say about 90 inches Oops, of this. A little bit more because you're going to do more stitching on it and there's more to go around. So once again, we're going to double it. I have the doubled end, or the loop end, over here, and I'm going to go around twice on the broom. And you see that I'm sewing above the vise, right? And then I'm going to make that lark's head. So let's review the lark's head again. Two fingers, they come down and then they touch. That gives you a loop. And you're going to thread the tail through the loop, put it down where you want it, and tighten it up. Uh, I think about right there for this one. And then I'm going to take the raw ends, or cut ends, and I'm going to, I bend it over and thread it through my broom needle. Okay. So I start by just going down. And then I like to come up on the first stitch right where I went down. And that kind of covers up that knot a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go diagonally. Oop. That's one thing you do need to be aware of. Tighten both of them. Okay. So this is kind of a back and forth thing. I want to make sure that I got the tension tight on both ends. And I'm going to go across this and then down. So I'm kind of gaining by going, making a diagonal through the um, inside of the broom so you don't see it. So I'm going back here and looking where I want to put it. Let's go back and forth and checking it out. So for me, I like to come to the top and then go down to the bottom. You don't have to. You can do it the opposite way. That's just how I do it. But I'm constantly going back and forth and looking at the placement on both sides. And if there's something it can grab on, it sure will do it. So make sure when you pull it tight that you look and make sure that you have that wax linen even. Like, see how that's not even? So I'm going to go back here and make sure, pull it real tight. Okay. And I will do this for at least two rows and depending on what I'm going to use it for. And actually, I think this is going to be an, another, since it keeps snowing, another uh, broom for cleaning off cars. So and you see how this kind of slides around a little bit as you're tightening it up? That's fine. 
fine. Just want to make sure that when, and that's the nice thing about using wax linen for this, and you don't have to. People use hemp. But I like it because it, it really gets tight and grabs. And uh, in, in your kit, you should have uh, wax linen. And I just, I, you know, I started using wax linen because I had a bunch of it hanging around. You could use artificial sinew if you wanted. But um, it's kind of my preference. So um, that's what I end up using. So I'm just going to kind of slide this so it's straight back and forth. And so I've got it stitched all the way across. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. Actually, I want to be on top. So I'm going to make that last stitch, and then I'm going to kind of go diagonally through the broom, and then just pull it through and cut it off. And then I'll do my um, my next row here. So I'll cut this off, and and then I'll do my next one. I'll, I'll do about two fingers down. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what it ends up looking like.